picture this. We have a dystopian world. Our protagonist is a genius millionaire, founder of a successful business, and veteran of bloody conflicts. With a mastery of combat skills, he's undergoing exams to become a special high-class individual, the most elite stratum of people in this world. And we get to watch him undergo the last trial of his exam. So, what is this final trial? This trial that will make him so powerful and feared throughout the nation? Why? Solving the problems of three high school girls, of course. What a truly revolutionary idea. I've never seen that done before. Except in all these other fans. Will our protagonist succeed? Well, that depends on the choices you make for him. Will you have a picnic at the riverside or in the mountains? Think carefully. Lives could hang in the balance. Ladies and gentlemen, may I present Sharon no Kuni. Sharon no Kuni is set in a country where instead of sending people to jail if they do something wrong, they are instead given what are called obligations to match the crime committed. So, let's say you were a hacker, then your obligation would be to never touch a computer again. Or if you were indecent in public, then your obligation would be to never touch yourself again. If you violate these obligations, you get sent off to a labor camp, where you get re-educated, or in other words, die horribly. But if you are shown to be reformed, you can eventually have the obligation removed. Our protagonist, Kenichi's task, is to go to a rural village and reform three high school girls, so that they can have their obligations removed. Oh, and maybe make one or more of them fall in love slash into bed with him, because this is a VN after all. There may also be intrigue, action, and a violent revolution involved, but that would be getting into spoilers. Suffice to say, Kenichi's not insignificant wealth and combat experience come in handy. There are two ways to create a VN protagonist. Make them with all the personality of a cardboard box so the reader can self-insert, or give them a genuine personality. And as luck would have it, the writers for Sharon no Kuni took the second option. Kenichi is a genius smart aleck with a drug dependency, PTSD, and a tendency to talk to himself. Not exactly relatable, but sure as hell interesting. As for the heroines, we have the high energy one, Sachi, whose obligation only allows her to do stuff for half the day, the stupid Sundere, Toka, whose obligation makes her follow her parents every word, and Natsumi, the klutzy uh, and super shy one, whose obligation doesn't let her touch members of the opposite sex. They don't exactly start as the most original characters, but they get plenty of growth throughout the story and are likable enough for you to care about them. Except for maybe Toka. God, she's annoying. Finally, we have Isono, who fills the male character comic relief role. And unlike most other characters who fill this role, he's actually useful and intelligent. Hooray! I mean, his sanity is also questionable since he tends to talk to fairies and is persistent in his attempts to marry his teacher, but still a great character. Kind of sad there's no Isono root. Sharon no Kuni makes perfect use of its world building with any detail discussed becoming plot relevant later. There's some mountains around the town and there used to be mining? That'll become relevant later. There was a revolution in the town a decade or so back? That will be relevant. Sono talks to fairies? Surprisingly, that's relevant too. No detail goes to waste from the description. But at the same time, the world is richly developed. The whole obligation system is not just some gimmick the writers came up with to give the girls some sort of problem to solve, but rather a system that affects the whole world it's set in, and its ramifications are deeply explored. It kind of feels similar to a piece of speculative fiction like 1984, albeit in a world that's not quite as far gone, with significantly less depression and a lot more cute anime girls. We can see how the country the story is set in is gradually drifting towards authoritarianism and how the obligation system, which isn't a bad idea in theory, has been twisted until it's a gross injustice, but the story still retains far more hope and Big Brother never becomes one of the romance options. Now, 
Aside from all that, Sharon Okuni also has great pacing. There's no separate character routes, just changes in which heroine is focused on, with a relatively linear story. As such, Sharon Okuni is able to dispense with a bloated, long-winded common route that plagues so many other VNs, and get the story going quickly. The rest goes pretty quickly too. There's maybe a bit of a lull in chapter 3, halfway through the story, but after that I marathon through the rest of it, unable to put it down. So yeah, a thought-provoking world and a highly engaging plot make for a good combination. So, where Sharon no Kuni suffers is its presentation. It's an older title, and you can definitely tell from the screen resolution, and the dated looking character designs. Maybe it's just me, but I'm really not a fan of the art style used for characters in VNs from the early to mid 2000s. Also, the music is just generic and forgettable. I mean, it never pulls you away from the story and generally fits the tone, but little more than that. There's some moments that could have been really emotionally resonant with a bright background track, but nothing in Sharon Okuni's soundtrack quite fits that bill. A shame, really. The only other thing that really bugged me was a certain incest sexual assault thing that happened near the beginning of the second chapter. It's completely unnecessary to the plot, and not really arousing either unless you're particularly into Shota. I'd assume that Shotokans aren't the demographic this being is aimed at, so I have no clue why that particular scene is there. Sharon Okuni is one of the few great VNs that isn't either long or hellishly long, and given its good pacing, I'd say this series is a perfect introduction to VNs if you've never read one before. For those who have, the guy fixes high school girls problem, girls fall in love with him setup is probably very familiar, but the rest of the story is quite original so it's still definitely worth a read. I wouldn't put it as my favorite VN of all time, but it's pretty high up there. So yeah, it definitely has a thumbs up for me. If you've already read Sharon no Kuni and are looking for something similar, I would suggest Jisenjo no Ma, which is written by the same people and has a very similar story structure. Another possibility would be Grisai no Kujitsu, which while further off in tone, has a very similar protagonist. Anyways, that concludes my review. Thank you for listening. Cheers!